Well, everything we talked about, very important in these bands, and the Corky is already taken off the board. Some fast bands, you know, it uh, looks like the teams have a pretty good idea what they want to get rid of, so. Callisto second ban, I think BNK Fear X looking at Ezreal third ban. KT could ban Tristana. They could leave it open and look to prioritize it. They ban Vi, so Sejuani open, Tristana open, Ezreal open. If BNK Fear X ban Tristana, KT could actually pick Sejuani and bank on the fact they don't expect Henna to play Ezreal. That's a question. Do they think yeah. they'll pick it up? Because he hasn't played it so far. It looks like they won't even let it be a question. They will just lock that Ezreal in and now BNK Fear X with response. Yeah, so you gave Deft Ezreal. That feels like the first big whoopsie, I would say. Uh, Zyra and Renekton is going to come through, and that is a powerful duo, but can it match Deft's Ezreal? You've ever found Ezreal? Like one of those videos you have in school where it's like, so, you gave Deft Ezreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what is the next step? Yeah. Uh, well, now we have BDD is here, and the Sejuani coming in. Closer looking at the Yone. You know, if you're going to play Renekton and a melee mid laner, I know you want AP in the composition, but I really feel like the Sejuani would have synced better than the the Zyra ever really gonna, is going to connect with it. Um, either way, they're locking the Yone for Closer. So I think Closer and Clear happy with their picks. Raptor, I, I don't rate the Zyra in this situation. Ezreal and Azir can kind of just stay at a distance. You're really going to have to play the jungle well. It's going to be a lot more about objective control, tempo, momentum. But it doesn't sync well with the dive from the other picks. Now, BK Firax starting to ban away top laners, getting rid of the Jax, because they obviously want to give Renekton a good time as possible. Uh, especially if they want to lean top and potentially threaten a dive. On the side of KT, you can really just target 80 carries here if you want. But they take away the center first. Yeah, and with the Zyra in the jungle as well, it, it does kind of say that, you know, there is a chance that Henna will shy away from the Ziggs. You can still play it, but Ziggs is like solo AP does feel very nice. They do have a, a nice amount of AD already, so he obviously could still go for it. But uh, that has been another pick that Henna has gone to uh, alongside of the Ash to deal with the Ezreal. As Braum is also banned away. Yeah. Not going to have Ezreal Braum. Braum's just really strong with anyone at this point, okay. except Jin. Yeah, no Jin. except no Jin. Except it does make me wonder if BNK Fear X want to slam Leona on four. Uh, and that's part of the reason they're banning away the oh. form. The Ziggs will be banned. So recognizing the threat off it. Mm -hmm. uh, and now. I think BNK Fear X, you could take your AD carry if you want to play safe, but I could also see them just wanting to take Leona. They opt for the misfortune. We saw it yesterday, starting to rise in priority, but they, this just guarantees that KT going to take the Leona in return. And Leona Ezreal, as far as bot lanes go currently in the LCK, pretty good. Pretty good, um, yeah. I would say. <laughs> and Barrel definitely comfortable on the pick. Uh, and then for the top lane pick, you could probably just take. Cassante, I feel like, is the angle I would expect most yeah. players to go based on what we've seen so far. You know, they definitely have the damage potential to give them insane front line. But also, if he wants to play more for carry, the Gnar is open. You could pick that, obviously. Uh, fine matchup into Renekton. So we'll see what he ups for there. It feels like tier list nowadays is Gnar and then Cassante, but it really depends on the player and the matchup, of course. Sometimes you don't get to see the top matchup, but it is going to be the Cassante, the choice this time. Yeah, and BNK Firex, I would expect an Alistair here is what it, most people would play uh, into the Leona. Not the best at dealing with Ezreal, but mo most engaged sports do kind of struggle at dealing with Ezreal. So that's what I expect in this situation. Um, and it looks like they are doing that. So no, no real surprise <laughs> <laughs> on that one. Yeah. Um, this whole draft felt a little bit telegraphed. Yeah. I mean, I like the misfortune. Uh, but I think so much is reliant on Closer and Duro really connecting with engages for Raptor and Hedda to follow up. But the problem is the carries you're trying to get onto are Ezreal and Azir. You know? Yeah. There's only two carries on the side of KT, so if you connect CC onto Deft and he dies, the composition for KT is going to struggle to come back from that. But again, I just think it's like 
you know, it's really going to come down to BNK Fear ex uh, execution. I think a lot of the picks they have individually, like I like Closer on the Pione, I like the, the Renekton Clear, I like the Misfortune. Um, but they've given so much power over. If Deft has a, like, if Deft has a good game, it's probably lost. If Deft has a great game, you're going to get smoked. Yeah. And generally, nowadays, Deft is having great games. Yep. And he's not going to have it every single time, but... Like, there were a lot of smiles on the KT Rollster faces when Deft was given Ezreal for free, essentially. Yeah. Um, might well be a tank is here as well, so he's going to become so hard to yeah. target. Absolutely. And we know what Cassante can do as well, uh, the carry from the top lane. As some fun drafts here in game number one. It looks like we are just about ready to hop onto the rift for this first game between KT Rollster and BNK Virex. Let's do it right now. All right, game number one, and the dancing begins. You know, you mentioned the Zyra in the draft. That does feel like, especially after seeing all of the champions picked, I feel it felt like the perfect spot for Sejuani. Mm. <laughs> Go like Renekton, Sejuani, and then you know BDD wants to play Azir, and then you just pick Yone. Yeah, I mean, I think... The, the two things I will say is, one, they obviously wanted some AP from it, and they weren't confident they could get, like, a Ziggs. Mm -hmm. Although, I guess maybe you could have gone Kai'Sa, and that still provides some AP. Yeah, so but Juani Kai'Sa, we've seen that before. Zyra does mangle front lines. If it's a good Zyra game from Raptor, like, she will shred Perfect, Pyoshik, and Beryl. The problem is, generally, Zyra is going to be favored more when the enemy team is, like, kite, like, trying to run into her, you know? Yeah. And if Deft is strong and can just fire Mystic shots at you without even approaching, <laughs> you're not going to have a good time. He's already doing it. He's already started early. It's level one. Oh my God, look at the resolve abuse from KT. <laughs> the resolve abuse. What? Four overgrowth, yeah. by the way. You know, I, I do remember somebody telling me that overgrowth was really strong two years ago. Smart dude. <laughs> Smart dude. It's um, free HP, you know? It is. And you know what else is free HP is Grasp on Azir. Um, this is already happening. They're going to get a stun down on a Henna as Deft, he's, he lands a couple of Qs, but it's mostly yep. just auto attacks, and now Henna doesn't have cleanse. And this is why Beryl is Atlas's favorite player, because he knows that he was just unlocking Hex Flash there. Yeah. That's why he uses the Flash. Absolutely. Unlocks Hex Flash, burns the cleanse, chunks Henna out, and Henna makes the actual correct decision and recalls. So, yeah. But then um, he's Duro. He's level one. He's level one. Okay, the Pulverize is pretty good, but Aftershock, Barrel just going to trade his life for it. And he might even live. Oh, he's going to live as well. The perfect dive comes down to take down Duro. Yeah, so I actually think Henna made the right decision because if you stay there, you're just dying too. Henna was so low. The person who made the wrong decision was Juro. Why are you staying alone as a level one Alistair? I guess maybe the thought process is I can live, I, I can survive, I can win. Uh, the answer is no, you cannot. And you didn't even get the return kill. Uh, still level one now. But yeah, just a really good early trade from the Leona Ezreal and just showing the power that this duo has and why most teams refuse to let it go over. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, it is the duo. Beryl is going to be spotted. Nice ward here, but Beryl actually knows about it, so he's just going to clear it out. And he could just go into mid and pressure, but it is pushing into closer, so not going to stick around for all too long. Just using the roam timing and, I mean, the confidence from them in the 2v2 and then the setup for this dive was just immaculate. Yeah, and the thing is, they have to go fairly fast because they don't want Juro to hit level 2 off these minions. Uh, Beryl does a pretty great, great job of using the Zenith Blade to get out of tower range. Uh, considering he didn't have flash, very risky for Beryl to be the one to tank, but he pulls it off, you know, I think Yoshik having flash still on the Sejuani might have been safer, but the execution was crisp and KT managed to pull it off. Yeah, even if Beryl dies, it's like, whatever, man. The Ezreal gets a kill, Deft is getting ahead in farm, Hena wasn't there, Duro got some money, but like, He's Alistair. Yeah, Beryl so. is no stranger to dying for the team. Yeah. Sometimes he just dies not for the team. <laughs> He's no stranger to just dying. 
<laughs> regardless of situation. Yeah. But, you know, generally, it feels like he gets value. In this case, he gets a lot of value because they already won the lane at level one. And now Deft is a kill. Yeah, so um, I seem to forget. We were saying something dropped about Ezreal being a big issue if he gets fed. Something like that, you know, full park. Mm. Um, not looking good for being K Fear X. To already have this Ezreal who has like a 15 CS lead and a kill at four minutes with a Sheen and a Tear, by the way. Yeah, already got it. TP'd minutes. back. He has teleport as well, so he just TP'd back. Um, Kyoshi is hiding on Bush Yoshi here. Can just Q and then steal it with Smite. Yep. Uh, he well, he didn't get it. Raptor didn't even smite. He got it with an auto. <laughs> oh, well, Pilsik, uh Yeah, that, that wasn't great. Raptor is going to feel good, though, about picking that one up. And well, this is... awkwardly goes down to his bottom side jungle. This is the Zyra win con, so um, I'm glad Raptor's making use of the pick uh, and getting value out of it. We'll see Closer take the wave in a comfortable spot, but BDD's going to TP back in. Uh, and Perfect's actually super low. This is so diveable. And BDD just TP'd mid, so he can't come to help. I think you're just dead, buddy. It is Cassante, but at level six Renekton with Flash, I, I think he's dead. I do agree. Level six hit here by Perfect, but I don't think it matters as Clear does get stunned up there a little bit. Oh, he's oh, gonna no! go down! Clear taking one too many turret shots. He had Flash as well. He thought he was out of range. That is a Criminal error for BNK Fear X. What looked like the freest play. I think the thing was that Perfect leveled up to six and that made them hesitate a little bit. The extra health, the extra stats as well coming in clutch, even though he didn't get to use his ult. But they just couldn't burst him down in the initial CC chain. Yeah, uh, and they need win big wins on yeah. the top side of the map. And unfortunately, that kind of turns into just a, a pretty minuscule win. I'd yeah, say. I mean, I think, I think Perfect, considering the context leading up to that, Perfectly happy. And he just gets to TP back in, and he's fine. You know, got some extra armor. It's actually him who got the kill versus Clear who got the kill. He's now up in experience. Clear should make this back with his wave, but he's feeling a lot better about the matchup now. Yeah. You mean Raptor, right? Picking up that kill. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Raptor picked up the kill on the other side. Yeah. And uh, that's going to make it much easier. Nice flash here from Pioshik, actually. Yeah, that was a good flash, honestly. Quick reactions. Yeah. Um, Could have been in trouble there. Doesn't make his jungle life much easier, as we do have a sweep coming in, just a trade from BDD, but Closer just holding on to his ultimate. Yeah, so, you see Perfect pretty low, uh, but actually hits his minion, gets level six. They go for the burst combo, and I think if he wasn't, he would've just died if he didn't hit level six. Just flash. And then here, you know, honestly, I feel like it's in that situation, he was so close to not getting the final shot. Oh. Oh, man. Look at that damage from the True Shot Barrage. Duro's level four. He doesn't have his flash. He goes down. And, man, that's two kills now for Deft. Yep. This is why you need the wins on the top side. Uh, and this Sheen Ezreal already is doing so much work. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, as I was saying, I, I think there you can kind of understand Clay wanted to say flash. It looks so close. Ends up backfiring. But now you're playing the top side, didn't go quite as planned, and your bot lane is bleeding. And it's an Ezreal. Yeah. They're bleeding too. I bet he's fine. He's <laughs> getting those grasp sacks up, you know. Uh, Closer, though, is putting on the pressure, and. Uh, you know, that was another part of the draft, right, where BDD just blind picking the Azir in a closer. You have to know you're playing against Yone. And he just says, okay, that's fine. Uh, a lot of pro players have said that, you know, the Yone is slightly favored in this matchup. But still, um, especially with tank Azir, it just feels like you can somewhat neutralize the lane and just not yeah. die. And so the Yone doesn't really get too out of hand. No, it's just, play it. it's just straight up. Zen played out the bush. The thing is, as well, Death can't even Mystic Shot the Alistair because the minions are in the way and it just doesn't matter. They just burst him so quickly. The NK Ferex making a move up towards the top side. If you fail with two, bring three. Yeah, perfect. Trying to keep the wave away from the turret and he's doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah, clear yeah, with three yeah. turret shots again. And now, I mean, missed uh, damage coming on in, but it does not quite matter as with enough people, they will kill him. That's why they had to bring three uh, because clear 
Not getting along with the tower is all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, not the best performance there. And now Raptor is low. This is the thing though, because they're so low in health, they could be vulnerable. Barrel is making moves. I don't think he'll be there in time. Yeah. So BNK Firex, pull that player from the top side. It's a kill for closer, which he can be pretty happy with. Trying to make a little play here on a BDD, but... Yeah, I don't think he cares. And no. yeah, talking about the Yone is here matchup, I feel like especially with the Grasp, like, the Yone is so annoying because he can constantly trade in on you. And he sustains so much with, like, the early Vamp Scepter, with the Footwork, with Second Wind, Doran Shield. It's hard to make the damage stick. But when you're playing Grasp as here, you don't care about that. You just plus one stack. <laughs> yeah. A plus one stack. You know, that's, that's your game plan. It's a good game plan as well. I think especially in matchups like these, um, the Grasp as here really does flourish. We saw yesterday... I forget exactly who it was. They played Azir. I think it was Chovy into the Ziggs, right? That's what it was. Showmaker's a Ziggs. And he just played regular straight up Azir. And that made sense. Because you're not getting a lot of grasp stacks against the Ziggs anyway. And you don't necessarily really need it because you don't have the Ziggs on top of you the whole laning phase like you do with the, with the Yone. I feel like in pro play, when champions have versatile builds that are both viable, uh, that just give you... I mean, obviously, every champion can vary the build a bit, but you know, like when we have like Lethality Callista and On Hit Callista both being viable in different scenarios, it makes the champion so much harder to deal with. Um, Imagine if Azir was flexible. Like we had bot Azir as well. Oh God, don't. That, we it would we just had be top Azir. It would just be perma banned every game. Yeah. And yeah, we did have top Azir there for a little bit. But the fact that you can play Azir with the the more mage heavy build, right, and you know, honestly, maybe we should see Top Azir as closer is just going to ult away. It could honestly. Like in Tecasante, you just go grasp. You're like, hey, Back. cool. <laughs> you know, Stop you want to trade them ideas, me? Brendan. <laughs> we need more Azir in cut. the LCK, guys. No, cut the broadcast. God, this can't go out. <laughs> Where's Dove? Can we get him back? Do <laughs> so you want to play top lane again for BNK Fear X? I mean, Claire's good, but he's not a top lane Azir player. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this this is the trading pattern. Clear goes in, BDD's like, yep. Thank you. Snack. <laughs> I said it right when he got it. Oh man. That's why you're the cast the play by play caster, you know? Yeah. The timing has to be really on point. Yeah. Are they really gonna die perfect again? No. Uh they are TPing in, but now Raptor kind of in an awkward spot. He even takes a turret shot, but the stun is gonna miss. It's four people in the top lane. He does avoid the Zyra ult and now trying to flash away, but an Alistair is there as well. And that'll be the end of Perfect, who's just not having a fun time. They keep saying, play safe top, but it's not working as everybody dives from there. And it's a trade of turrets, but the NK is going to get the first one. I actually think Perfect could have killed Raptor there if he committed the flash early. Feels like he was kind of like, you know, I'll just buy as much time as possible. But I actually think he'd kill Fresher. You can see he was trying to look for the angle under the turret. If he'd flashed to get the stun on a Raptor, then ulted, I think Raptor's just dead, uh, but doesn't find the opportunity there, doesn't see the window. And BNK Ferex actually having a gold lead on the back of these kills they picked up. Uh, particularly Closer, pretty fed in the mid lane, and Raptor on this. Uh, Zyra, watch it back again. I just think it's like this angle here. The wave is really small. Raptor ends up getting aggro. During the flip back, if you can like flash, right, yeah. maybe go for the stun into ult. Raptors have flash as well, so maybe, I mean, it's hard to say for sure, but the problem is he ends up burning his flash later, only to die. Yeah. But I guess hindsight's 20, 20 right? Absolutely. It feels like he almost thought he was going to get out of that situation because he had trimmed the waves so much. Hey, I like, maybe they can't dive me. I didn't think they were going to dive, and they brought four people. <laughs> so. It's not fair. Yeah. 4v1, not fair. Um, BNK Ferrex actually do have a gold lead, so everything we've, you know, said about uh, Def getting fed. He's still very fed, and he's still going to be very obnoxious in the mid lane, but at least BNK Ferex have found those wins eventually. They did go up top again and again, and they bullied perfect. They got a bunch of kills. The Zyra pretty fed in her own right. We'll just see if she can get as much value as the Ezreal will. Yeah, and it really comes down to a battle of who's the most fed. I think also it's interesting that Closer is getting quite far ahead. If he connects on a death, that's a big thing. You know, very tanky composition, two carries on KT. You kill one of them, 
the comp will start to flounder, and Clear is on this great flank angle. It's going to be such a good fight for BNK Fear X. They, they're pinging it. They know he is somewhere in there. He's got to be. There's a crocodile hide in his brush. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's level 11, though, and Perfect's only 10. I, I feel like BNK Fear X, if they were ready to go on this one, they might just want to fight for it. And yes, they will. The TP is going to come in. Duro, though, look at his health bar. He's he dead already. Yeah, this is a 4v5, actually. Duro can't fight, and they're just going to say, well, we don't have a support. Let's just give the objective over. Yeah, and that's after they TP closer in. So Death actually did this really nifty Ezreal mechanic where you land three Mystic shots in a row. And they just, there's no <laughs> counterplay. Maybe uh, like uh, Essence Flux as well. That's the name of his W, right? You know, I was watching. I don't think he landed Essence Flux. I think it was literally just three Mystic shots. And, and that was it. Yeah, and BDD, he did the, the cool Azir thing yeah, where he sent the little jab. Oh. Yeah. Stab it. He's got uh, Leandris. Yeah. Up well, against the guy who's only building health. Duro's like, please get me this Warmox ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to take a while. He needs another component, and then he needs to complete it. Duro, there's a wave bot. You should just take... Closer doesn't need it, you know. Closer has enough items. Steal it, yeah. He's played the Rune King. That's full build for Yone, right? Yeah. I love how much control KT have over mid lane. A lot of control right now. Okay, a bit less control. I mean, at least on MF, okay, you, you no can soak the control, yeah. one Mystic shot, right? Yeah. You can soak one, and then you can get the shield back because you do go for this BT build. Yeah, talked I mean, you about can actually stay through the poke. You know, because one of the things I've talked about with Ezreal uh, is the fact that he can just position himself mid and just force everyone off the wave, kind of like Lucian Nami used to. But the thing is, the, the Bloodthirst to MF is basically immune to poke. You just walk up, stand in front of the wave, and auto it. Uh, and you have to really mess up to get poked enough that it matters. And then you can just go to a jungle camp and heal up. Very strong. Feels like uh, maybe we found the mid-game Ezreal counter. Well, you say that, <laughs> but Death doesn't have the mana immune yet. Stacked up. And yeah. I, I think the game might feel a little bit different after that. Also, that's just one champion. We're not talking about the rest of the comp or team fights. Mm. where the Ezreal is going to have a, a much larger effect outside of just bullying in the mid lane. So we'll have to wait and see what that looks like as well. You remember this spot? This is where uh, Taming had that rough moment on the Ezreal yesterday. Oh, man. <laughs> Why are you bringing it up? Well, it is Chemtech Soul this time around, so... Oh, look, he got some good poke down, uh, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, Hena full health. Doesn't matter at all. Death actually lost the trade. <laughs> Death lost the trade. He has to get the honey fruit. Yeah. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> thankfully because of Chemtech Soul, um, you can get the honey fruit and it gives you a shield. So you can pretend to be Misfortune. Yeah. Even as Ezreal. Why would you spend all that money on a blood thirster when you can just pick up honey fruit? Look at KT. They're like, yeah, you want a Chemtech trade? Cool story, bro. I Wait, no, uh, uh, BNK Fear X. Yeah. We're going to take mid tier one. And I agree with KT. That is much more valuable than one Chemtech tree. Yep, 100%. How about another turret? Another turret would be good too. I think this is a winning trade for KT. Uh, I mean, I guess it gets, let's BNK Fear X stall the game out some more. And now the looking bot. How tanky is BDD now? That's always one interesting. Like, how many stacks have you gotten? How much, how hard are we grasping right now? Yes, uh, paging Dr. Chronicler. Yeah, I always say it like, <laughs> I always say it like, Dr. Asking Wolf. It rhetorically to everyone listening, like, I wonder how many stacks he has. I wonder if there's any way we could potentially figure out how many stacks our Azir has on his rune. But in reality, I'm rune. saying, yo, Chronicler, look at <laughs> the stacks now, please. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get an update for you guys. Thank you for translating that so people know. We did have some action earlier on, but it does... Do you do you have this feeling that the meta has slowed down quite a bit? I think part of it is that teams are very hesitant because it feels like... Like, the last couple of days when a team... Um, oh, I just got a message from Chronicler. Wait, which stacks? Grasp. How much health <laughs> has BDD got for Grasp? We'll, you know, we want to know how much he's uh, been stacking. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I feel like a thing is a lot of the games we've seen recently, it's been um, 
like the game has ended really explosively. Like yeah. one team's like it hasn't been like super long games when one team's got a big team fight win. Oh, maybe a fight here, trying to engage onto a Leona. Never a good idea. The stun comes in and closer has to flash away. The Zyro gets some value here on a barrel who is being jumped out. But the rest of the team from KT is coming in. They're trying to go on a barrel now as closer goes in. The MF ult does so much damage. Down will go the Alistair, but man, this Kazante is just unkillable as it will be a shutdown given over to BDD who picks up two kills in the fight. Yeah, Byron's up at 15, but neither team really in position to do it. Ends up being a slight edge for KT, but not by much. And yeah, I feel like the focus was a bit off for being K Fear X there. So, Closer has a good flash here, um, but he does end up getting caught out by the full duration stun from Beryl. But the shuffle doesn't come in soon enough. But I think the problem I have is that BNK Firex end up focusing Barrel here. Uh, play and then Cassante. Yeah, Clear actually goes on a BDD, but there's no follow-up. And then again, they're just hitting the Cassante. You need to be hitting relevant people. Like, look how low Death and BDD are. I feel like if they could connect onto them instead, maybe a different story. Uh, you really have to be prioritizing these carries in this fight. Man, it is full tank team. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just pointed to the glacial shroud. I'm like, hey, um, everyone's a tank. That's not normally, but we obviously we've seen this many times in Ezreal's career as a champion. That sounds weird to say, but uh, yeah. God, you know what? He has a glacial shroud. I'll say two things. One, when everyone says tanky, Chemtech Soul actually starts to have some value. And two, thank God it is not a mountain soul. Oh, sick. We got the so, 735, is that? So he has 33 stacks. 33 stacks. Yeah. How much health is that? Uh, I did not see that number. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't read the Korean. Um, I, I would assume it's like 150, 200? 133 health. That's yeah. a lot less than I expected. That's honestly, I'm very disappointed. I expected to be significantly more. Um, it's better than not having 133 health. Yeah, but only by about 133. Yeah, approximately. Um, now we do have Barrel in a really rough spot. He is Leona, but oh, the double stun coming in. But nobody's here on the side of KT. It's just Barrel making cool plays by himself. Not the first time we've seen that. Nice setup here, though, from the side of BNK PRX, and they're going to start the Baron. Yeah, they should be able to scout this out. Definitely has his ult back as well, so huge value connected here. It's not going that fast. Raptor hasn't committed the ult. They clearly want the fight here. Zero looking for the angle. Uh, that's <laughs> He went backwards. That's not quite the angle. We do have the TP coming in. As now, 4v5, the front line though clear in a rough spot. And Pyoshik's in the pit. It's a flip and it goes to Pyoshik. The MF ult does get some huge value. They're hitting the back line. Death is dead. And yes, KT got the Baron, but what does the fight look like? It's BDD, unkillable in the pit. Nobody's hitting them. They're all hitting Pilsik. As finally, BDD is going to get some attention, but it's too little and it's too late. As KT, they win the fight afterwards as well. And they just leave BDD unchecked in the fight. They were chasing the Cassante. You stopped chasing the tank. Well, I guess it's Zia's attack too. I guess it's Zia's attack too, but being KPRX, it backfires so hard, the initial play actually starts a fight. They end up going for Beryl when they know he doesn't have support. They've seen both solo laners and they don't opt to TP in. The problem is you're in Trin Ezreal. So you know you're going to take a fair bit of damage around this Baron. Uh, and Closer starts to get chunked out. He does cross over the wall uh, with the Q, so he's going to get hit by the ult. But then here, Clay gets chunked. And I think Closer does a fantastic job of getting on Beryl. The grasping roots from the Zyra is huge, but then they all move to peel the Henna, and BDD is just completely untouched. You know, Closer tries to get on top of him, doesn't succeed, clears super low. Henna just charges into BDD. Uh, I guess confident they can take BDD down, but BDD is so bulky. Far more than you expect from a typical Azir. You know how much more? Puddle up About 133 yeah. health. <laughs> Approximately. Approximately. Yeah. And KT fans very happy after that one. Because not only is it the fight win, but it's also just a straight up flip. Like it's yeah. Sejuani in the pit. The, the flip wasn't standing good. Standing there 
waiting to smite it. Yep, the flip wasn't good. Getting tra trapped in the pit wasn't good. Clay got chunked out. The target selection. I actually want to give credit to Closer. I think his target selection was great that fight, but <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. it was kind of him and just him. You know, he got the ult on a, on a death. It was a good grasp from Roots from Raft as well. And then he tried to kill BDD. But yeah, I think also credit to Perfect, because although I said they were chasing the Cassante, Perfect did a good job of... Oh, nice little angle here, but now the flank comes in, and again another huge Solar Flare comes in from Barrel. This guy cannot miss today, as Dev somehow finds himself in a really rough spot, but the rest of the team is right there. As with the push, the Baron push coming through from KT, they lose their Ezreal, but in goes Closer and immediately dies. Actually, the main carry of the game now is BDD. It's not Deft's. Def dies and they're like, yeah, we don't need him. Yeah, honestly, Def caught by Yoni ult two fights in a row, ends up dying. Not really doing a good job there, especially because he had flash for both of them. But it just doesn't matter. BDD on Azir, he's so bulky. He has at least 133 extra health and <laughs> he is just killing everyone. Yeah, I'd say probably like 150 at this point. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. And he has Ripmaker finish. They TP in, they're not able to end the game actually because they're just busy hitting a tank. Where have we learned this? Barrel's gonna die to the tower. Okay, he's gonna. Uh, oh, the TP coming in. This game is getting wacky. Um, uh, this this TP doesn't actually do anything. The whole team is still there, and he's just dead. So down will go clear as a bonus kill given over to KT. I love the bonus kill. 164 right now. We just hit. Thank you very much, Jason. Now we're starting to cook. You know, that's that's getting more significant. Uh, and yeah, this ult from Errol, so high value to get both the squishy backliners. And then Dev here, I think he got caught. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caught again, without using Flash. He got rooted. Flashed after the root. I feel like the root from Zyra. Yeah, I, we got a fight here. A nice dodge this time from Dev. Uh, BNK Firax very desperate to try to make this one work in mid lane. When you're being pushed in multiple lanes at the same time, I feel like Closer is trying his best, but again, that, that fight, the uh, decision to fight was not very good. And now KT are just going to win the game. Closer tries to flash, but Cassante breaks the game and takes him back. Yeah. He does not care. And will, uh, oh, oh man, perfect. He's angry, he wants revenge. He says, you died me three times, how dare you? I will come back to say Fed Cassante, and I will end the game. He's six, three, and five after that early game. Yeah. Give him another kill. He died three times, and then he got six kills and six assists. The game is over, guys. And 176 is the final health score for BDD. And there it is. GG, KT win game one. Yeah, and I think there are moments where BNK Firex found something. You know, I think. Raptor did a pretty good job on the Zyra, was getting some good roots on a death with the follow-up on the Yone, but they didn't have an answer for BDD. Felt like they struggled to get on top of these carries, and the Baron decision, I think, will definitely haunt them. Uh, came a flip, they lost the Baron, they lost the fight as well. We weren't able to take down BDD, and now 1-0 down in this series, and KT looks like they've kept that momentum going for that five win streak. Yeah, it looked pretty nice. I, I think that getting the Ezreal felt pretty good. He didn't end up being the main carry, but he's still Ezreal. He still does an insane amount of damage. And when literally everybody is building some form of tankiness, yeah, it's very difficult to find the right targets. And that's something that BNK Firax struggled with the entire game. And you know, I'm going to say BDD had a really good game. Probably going to get POG. But perfect, the 0-3, yeah. blow up the 6-3 and 6. Zero to hero. Feels very nice. And uh, guys, we're done here for game number one. We'll take a break and have the space. We'll be right back.
라인으로 캐보자 연애 노공이야 연애 노공 아 여기서 봐줄래 연애? 템플 몰라? 잡아줘 <웃음> 연애 노플 연애 노플 템플 진짜 역겹다 저기 풀려오네 나 업쟁이 치면서 피넥 풀게 내넥 풀 몰라 아직 안 들었어 나 타이라 봐줄래? 야나 근데 3천원 있다 타이라 봐달래? 아 그냥 컨트 있어 초식에 있어 초식에 있어 이렇게 아 죽여 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 알리 노플 공은 돌아 노플이야 얘 노플 공은 돌아 공은 돌아 알리도 노플 알리도 노플 공어 공돌아 공돌아 야야야 나 밀쳐진다 이거 야다 죽여 다 죽여 나이스 아니 빌트 타고 빌트 타고 아 이거 내가 깜로 그럼 쓰는 거지 살았을 듯? 아 진짜 um, They've been off the off the beaten path for a while now They've been all over the place yeah. You know we had the media redemption arc We had the right media uh, story, the left media story. No, it's just been everywhere. But uh, I digress. BNK Firax have decided that they won't play in Ezreal. Honestly, Ezreal had a really strong early start. Def's team fighting was kind of lackluster. He kept getting hit by grasping roots into the Yone ult. Yeah, he Still would like dramatic. Arcane shift in because he wanted to be there on time doing tons of damage. And then he would just get caught by something. So it's... um. It's fine. I mean, at the end of the day, he's not going to play it in this game. And we know that Death is fantastic at Ezreal. It's just one of those games where you know, just a little bit slow to react to some of the uh, CC that did come in. Now, we do have a bunch of uh, 80 carry bans in general. Some of them that go mid, some of them that go bot. Will it just be a Sejuani first pick? No. Looks like they really want the Renekton, which... The Croc? I'm not sold on the value of the B1 Renekton when you dove top three times. Somebody get LS on the phone. And Perfect still <laughs> outvalued the Renekton. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean... Unconvinced. I think the idea is that Renekton right now pretty much wins against anything else that's meta. Like, just in the lane. Like, it can do very well 1v1 versus Cassante. can do very well into even Jax if it gets picked. Not not the greatest matchup there, obviously. It gets outscaled, but um, into the Gnar, which we see very often. Anyway, th they're going to do it. That's what they want to do for this series. Sometimes you just got to be along for the ride. Azir and Sejuani are given over, though. Yep. Some pretty good picks. I think BDD and Yoshik, the two people who received votes, for the POG, pretty happy with those ones. They have gone for the Zeri though, so they opted to pick up the Vi with no Ezreal available and then take the Zeri. So they have point and click CC for whatever KT take, have a good answer to their carries. Uh, and the Zeri is going to be there for the cleanup. Now, KT could just take top in, in this situation. I don't think they're hugely pressured to take AD carry now. And they thought that, you know, if you can still make a big impact after getting dove three times, I think the pick's working for you. Yeah. For me, I, I'm much more of a fan of the Gnar Cassante handshake because I do feel like Gnar at least puts on a bit more pressure and uh, it does have big impacts in team fights, even if you don't get an immaculate flank. Now, we do have mids being banned out by the side of KT, AD carries being banned out by the side of BNK Fear X. Yeah, with how bulky KT's composition is already, uh, you, you feel like BNK Fairex need an AP mid laner, so you aren't really concerned about things like the Yone coming out. I would say Close is going to have to pay, play something that has that AP damage potential. Now, the Caitlyn has been banned here. Ziggs, perhaps. I, I wonder if they ban... Well, they go with Zaya. That's good, obviously, uh, into the Vi, but I feel like here, KT Rollster can pick the AD carry and then just go for Braum on five. I'd be really happy, but they actually opt instead to go for the Alistair, thinking that BNK Fairx may well go the Leona into it. And it's a pretty pretty solid matchup. We've seen a lot of players happy to take that trade. Yeah. I, for one, am a fan of Barrel's Alistair. Anyone um, remember 2019 Down One Gaming Barrel? Having a big impact and in international tournaments on that one. Definitely one of his uh, old go-tos, as it's Rakan and Ari. Ari Vi coming through. I like this quite a bit. I feel like between the Vi, Rakan, and oh, you can't play Jinx here, surely. I, I feel like between, I mean, I think Raven's even worse. <laughs> I feel like between those three picks. Samira. No way. That's not a oh, champion. He's, he's just. Mila. 
Remember this. You know, I actually kind of like this. The Neela actually feels good. I actually, it feels better than everything else he hopped yeah. with. Because the fact of the matter is, you're playing into Vi, Ari, Rakan. If you play Jinx or Draven, you're dead. You die. Right? And it's it's a three tanks, a Zir, and an AD carry. If they kill the AD carry and have enough in the tank to kill the Azir, they're good to go. So he's they've, he's picked a carry, which is going to be harder to kill, which I think makes sense. You know, it's part of the reason why BNK Fear X banned Desire, knowing what the game plan is. I'm interested to see how it performs, but although I like the Neela in terms of what it's dealing with, I honestly like BNK's Fear X comp a lot more, uh, and a lot more than the comp they had last time. They have a lot of synergy between their dive threats. They have a Zeri, to, they have a Zeri Ari. What is that? Kangaroo. <laughs> it's like a yellow dinosaur. I think it's a They're kangaroo. the fearless foxes. I, I don't know. Anyway, but, uh, good effort, good drawing. Yeah, if you get that good engage off with this composition, which you can definitely do, Zeri and Ari will find the momentum in the fight and clean up. You have a lot of gold tools. This is the sort of composition you want to play if you're an Eastern team. It just, you press your buttons, you go, you fight. Yeah. On the side of KT Rolster, it's a very bulky, hard to kill comp, but only two carries once again, and a lot of answers to them. Well, they've got Cassante, and he did some carrying in the last game. So we'll see if Perfect can mimic that here as we hop on the rift for game two. Game number two comes out, and being KFRX, they pull out a very aggressive composition. One that feels very good for their team as well. I love their how identity. Yeah, I think for sure. I love how KT's comp is just getting bulky and bulkier. I feel like if this series goes to game three, you know, it'll just feel like Malphite 80 carry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why not? Tanks are pretty good. It's just all tanks, you know? I mean, obviously, Neela isn't a tank, but I feel like a big thing with this pick is there's obviously the bonus XP, which is nice, but I feel like the pick can work really well if you're trying to dive into an enemy team and you have people to set you up. But often, if you're being dove into, like, as a Renekton, if you're trying to deal with, like, UW, it's like playing into Jax, you know? We saw last draft that uh, Jax was banned when BNK Fear X had Renekton, specifically because when you do the stun, the little whack whack, he just blocks it. Yeah. And Neela has not only the ability to do that herself, but also to apply that to teammates. It's a little bit irritating. Yeah, it doesn't feel very fun to play into, I would imagine. And uh, she has a lot of anti-dive ability herself. And once again, some resolve abuse. Yeah, we got four of them over here. And it's actually five resolve pages overall. Yeah. Four primary. Um, it's pretty good right now. Just beefcake. Perfect. Gets over. BDD has not lost a single game on his ear just yet, which is pretty impressive considering that, you know, they had four losses in a row. I guess at that point we were still seeing a lot of Tristana Corky. Yeah. And his ear wasn't really as prevalent. And now as they've started winning, he's started playing it more. Is it related? Is it correlated? BDD plays more his ear, they win more? I think it's more so. The first four games, they were playing against teams like Gen G and D+. And in the last five games, it was teams like Nongshim and Bro. I think that's more relevant. And T1. And T1. Also an Eastern team right yeah. now. So they're in that pool. No, but I, I think that is oversimplifying it. They definitely improved as a team over that time. You can see from the play, even if the opposition has been a bit easier. Uh, I think, you know, the, the bands, because the Tristana and Corky weren't working that well for BDD. So I think the fact that we're seeing them ban now and the Azir's kind of opened up, I think it has helped uh, KT. Yeah, certainly has. And uh, we have seen a bit of that. As Hannah, level two, went back, got a call. Looks like the back is pretty good. Meanwhile, Duro's just trying to steal a blue away from Pyoshik. <laughs> just being an annoying little Rakan. Yeah. I feel that's one of the fun things playing Rakan support is it's so hard to pin you down that like you can just kind of stand there and like what is Sejuani actually supposed to do to you? Like the, the, the threat is just not there, so. Able to just be a pest at times uh, and obviously they have full information of where Pyoshik is. Uh, but I don't think anything's really gonna come from it. 
You see Raptor just channeling on the recall. Uh, and Claire has been trying to get some good trades and nothing has come. Oh, there's a wave crashing here. They might go for the dive. But with barrier and heal and level three, this is risky. Let's see if it works out as they do get the double knockup. But TP is coming in and the flash, they do get the stun, but where's the damage? It's non existent. Feral will survive. The flash comes in from closer. They're trying to turn it on to closer as now stun comes in from Pyoshik. And yes, they get the kill, but he's going to go down as well. Double kill to the Zeri as immediately Zeri moment to set up here early on in this game. Raptor gonna take the third kill away, but Henna, very happy with the way that one wins. I don't think this could have gone worse for KT, and I think the thought process was, hey, we don't have cleanse on the Zeri, the Nila stacks the Sejuani passive. You know, we've had games where no one stacks the Sejuani passive. You have everyone apart from Azir stacking the Sejuani passive. The problem is, it's barrier heal from BNK Fear X, and there just isn't that much damage. It's two tanks and a Nila. It wasn't even close. Like, actually, just look at Henna's health in this situation, okay? Gets combo, the barrier comes in. Still full health, by the way. Okay, you're like 70%. They were just not, like, close is closer to dying than Henna ever was. Yeah. And they do obviously get him in the end, but like, there was no hope they were killing Henna ever. And the closer TP obviously is a, is a fantastic contribution, but. I think they just completely overestimated themselves in not only the damage they would have, but also disrespecting the summoners that BNK Fear X came in with. Yeah. I mean, even the Guardian was there. I, like, just sitting there with full health and a little shield as the dive is coming in, and it was it was rough. Maybe a little bit of an overestimation of what Neela is capable of yeah. at this point in time. Like, yeah, Def got on top of them both. The whole team did, but... Stack uh, the passive quickly for Sejua. Oh, they're stunned. It's yeah. Health, you know. Just didn't do much. CC is great, but you do need damage as well. Yeah. Well, they've got one semi-damage dealer in mid. Yeah, maybe... Can you have too many times? Oh, well, got a little charm here. BDD, though, into Raptor level 5. Is going to be totally fine. And you can see... Kyoshi actually hesitant about doing this dragon. Raptor's moving down. That does hit level six though. So part of the advantage of having the Neela is that extra XP. So if a fight breaks out here, Henna hasn't really massively benefited yet from the gold that he picked up. He's bought Berserker Greaves, right? But Death has uh, pickaxe. He's not actually that far behind in combat power because Henna went cool. And with Death also being level six, I think they don't want to contest this dragon. They will just trade objectives across. Yeah, meanwhile, Henna and Duro just trying to hold the wave here in a pretty good spot. Gonna deny some of their minions while Death and Barrel have to go in and, and do the dragon. So they can catch up a little bit in terms of that extra XP that the Neela did give. I say a little bit because Henna, again, still not level six, and he's only halfway there. So any little bit will help, and especially if it's kind of like, well, we're definitely 100% not fighting the streak anyway. Might as well do a little maneuver like this. Might as well min-max. Especially with how strong Death's ult is, but also, uh, even more importantly... Oh boy. Here we go again. Hello, I've got level 6 now. Henna has flash though. He's not level 6 himself, and he can't get away from the Neela as the double knockup comes in, and this time around with Barrel also on level 6. They have the tankiness, they have the damage, and Duro, ooh, he's gonna get away. Just barely. As Raptor comes in just to try to escort them out, but this time the dive looks much better. Yeah, this was better for two reasons. Uh, actually, three reasons. One, Closer had no TP. Two, Barrel had ult so he could tank for significantly longer. And three, uh, KT had both of their ults to actually provide a lot more damage onto Henna. So, much better timing for the dive. They kind of learned from that one. Uh, you can see Deft. Uh, just a whole entire level of yeah. Henna. And obviously part of it is that passive, but also the impact of this dive. And I think Henna basically does everything you can in this situation. Flashes the combo here. I think the only downside is that means Barrel gets aggro a little late, but then you just get CC chained and die. You just die in the stun. Not really much you can do. And I, I don't even think having level six would have necessarily changed things there uh, for... Uh, Henna, if Duro had level six, then we're talking. But yeah, just a good dive execution, and clearly you're seeing what KT were going for with that first dive. They just needed a bit more firepower.
Yeah, they made it work eventually. They're still down on gold, but KT did get that first dragon. Uh, three grubs to go over to BNK Firax. Raptor let the dragon go and took that trade himself. So the Zeri's still in a pretty good spot. And the Renekton slightly ahead of the top lane. So we do see some small leads going the way of the That's why we pick Renekton blind for small leads in the top lane against a Cassante. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I never think that's uh, a good idea. Here comes Raptor. Trying to get on top of Pyoshik and Vi in the 1v1 will defeat the Sejuani. Can break the armor very nicely as, yeah, that was, it wasn't wasn't really achieving much there anyways. Yeah, but that Raptor, second game this has happened actually, where Raptor's just decided at a certain point, I'm going to invade you, fight you, and steal your camps. And work out pretty well. And now Perfect is low on mana, but has three biscuits, so don't be baited by that, as I just was. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I hope BNK Fairex aren't. Wait, they're moving closer uh. over, but they're sending Vi away. I think the wave dying means they're not going to go for the play, but they're leaving that bot side pretty vulnerable again with this top side lean. We aren't seeing anything come from it yet, but you have to be cautious yeah. that KT could just do that dive play they did before. Exactly the same again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's very obvious that Raptor was just up there. Now, he could have backed and ran bot side um, right away. So they're not going to commit to it just yet. But they can say, I, I mean, there's no camps down here. And all Pioshik has to do is just stand here. And Jura's not sick yet. They really need his ult. He's close, though. He's close. I think he gets it on these three. Yeah. OK, nice. That makes such a big difference uh, in terms of preventing the dive. I still think 3v2, KT can pull it off, but uh, definitely gives them some cause for concern. We do see them get a lot of tower damage, though. Uh, the Neela so good at actually shredding through the towers, but in return, clear, going to pick up a couple of plates here. This is more the lead you want on your, your B1 Renekton. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you better be doing this if you're picking B1 Renekton. And uh, well, he's finally done it. He's got two plates. He is proxying in between the turrets, and with all this pressure, Raptor is able to pick up the second set of grubs. You see that Pyoshik is just on the bottom side of the map, maybe setting up for another dive, but there's not really a lot of pressure down on the bottom side uh, waves. So they're not going to be able to dive and, you know, perfect. Just being annoying, stop in the back here. Going to be able to do it again. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Clay's that bothered about hanging around yeah. up here, but uh, we'll stay for... Uh, whoa! Uh, okay, well, that, that was a whoopsie. <laughs> so you found yourself face to face with a boar and a cow. Fortunately, you're playing Zeri, but your tower is forfeit. Yeah, the fact that he had to dash over the wall, and even just again, like Pyoshik's presence, just standing there, not even killing Henna, but it's still a full turret and a full turret full of plates that goes over to Neela and the team of KT. So now they're going to try to take the second dragon as well. See if they can do this. I mean, it is a straight up 4v4. Clear trying to run it in. We got double TPs from both sides. Closer taking a lot of damage, trying to get Pyoshik down, but he is going to get the smite. And now we just got a crazy festival here in the Dragon Pit. A ton of damage, a huge sweep on everyone. But the Zeri is untouched. Finally, Perfect gets to that back line, but it's too little and it's too late as Penna just rips them apart alongside a clear, and they absolutely wipe KT. Really good team fight from BNK Firex, and it felt like they knew exactly who they needed to target in that one. Death really not having the impact, and KT's tanks just cannot clean up. Penna going basically untouched there. And in those longer fights, it is the Zeri who's going to carry that momentum forwards. Huge lead now. Going to pick up some plates as well, but already a 3,000 gold lead for BNK Firex. Hey, they're getting plates bot, they're getting plates mid, they're getting plates top. They just killed five champions. Yep. And I think the big thing is tracking Henna and also Death and just the impact difference is the same. Because Death slides in, but gets caught by the quickness as he goes through. The ult only connects to the enemy front line and he just gets shredded. This shuffle is big, but Henna again doesn't connect on him. Targets are getting low. Perfect tries to get on top of Henna, but it's too little too late the dash back in to clean up as well. Just really excellently played by Henna, and now you have the Zeri who's approaching already at like an item and a half. Death has just an Infinity Edge. 
I'm not sold. Yeah. And just an Infinity Edge doesn't really do much at this point, especially when you're very low range. You have to put your face in the fight to actually do that damage. And meanwhile, the Zeri is just skating around doing tons. I mean, they committed so hard to get into that pit. And yes, everybody was balled up for Azir ult, Nila ult, but as you mentioned, they're not really hitting the key targets, especially Henna, who's just sitting there doing tons of damage. Also, the Renekton. Yeah, Plague getting so much value just by being in the middle of Powered Qs and Dominus. Yeah. And so the B1 Renekton must have been a good pick. <laughs> Got value in the last fight. Now KT trying to make a play here on this one as uh, BNK PRX, they say, this is our objective. You guys can't really fight us here, but now trying to engage onto the Renekton. Clear does have Dominus still as they push into the Banana Brush. And now the engage comes out and Death is going to survive. He only hits the buy and immediately dies. He does nothing in the fight. The sweep comes in, hits three though, but the damage is not quite there. And the Zeri once again is getting some done, but they don't commit as everybody turns around to deal with Perfect. I feel like they had an angle on the other side of the fight, but instead they're just gonna try to kill Perfect here as they should eventually be able to, right? He is Cassante, but no, he will go down and that kill will be given a Raptor. And I'm gonna be honest, the difference between KT's mid-impact and bot impact is night and day. BDD doing his best to try and carry this in depth. I'm yet to see him be useful. Uh, we'll see this one, trying to connect on the Renekton. They don't manage to land the stun. And then I love this decision. Duro goes in with the ult on a death. We get the follow-up from Closer, <laughs> the buy ult. Just one shot. Not much you can really do there. And this is the power of this composition. The BNK Fear X, BDD does get a lot of value with the ultimate connects to the closer. You know, I was kind of saying Nila would make sense because any other AD carry is just going to die immediately. I was wrong. Nila also <laughs> just dies immediately. I mean, it doesn't help that uh, Depth on Nila, he is ulting a Vi who then just says, OK, yeah, and then presses her R button on her. Not the target you want to be ulting. Um, no. Yeah. No, it's I, I think, you know, Vi is such I think particularly the Vi Ari Rakan is so capable of just picking a target and saying you don't get to play the game. And in some compositions, that isn't as bad as it sounds because you have a variety of parries that can make an impact. But you have BDD, who doesn't have the highest damage output in this tank is here, and you have Neela. Yeah. Those are your carries. So if one of them doesn't get to play the game, I just We've seen two fights in a row. BDD just couldn't do enough, especially not at this point. Maybe later on has more potential, but later on, it's going to be a Zeri who's already 4 1 and 6. Been a part of every kill, and uh, just getting extremely fed. Goes for shield bow second. And, you know, he, he's, he's getting ready to make sure that he can dive into the fights with the rest of this composition and not die immediately and also have a big impact. And as he gets third, fourth items, Hena is going to be shredding everybody on the side of KT. Uh, you know, a lot of tankiness, but he can itemize to deal with that. And the team is so far ahead that... Uh, oh, the drift. They should have the wallets. Here comes the drift. Let's see how Raptor does it. Should be pretty simple, and he's going to knock it straight into this turret and take that one down. Very nicely done, Raptor. Uh, and actually, perfect TP's out. How about another one? Nobody's here because perfect TP'd out, and a third charge out of the Rift Herald. The amount of value they're getting into you know, turrets this game is insane. Recently, we've seen so many zero charge heralds where it just gets denied. Mega value there from BNK Fear X. Oh, trying to go for an engage now. Look at this, Depth, he is able to go and uh, die. Yeah, everybody just dives in onto him. Henna's tanking the turret, he does not care. Nothing that Barrel can do. And the push comes in as they pick up more. They have six grubs as well. You get Fear X, it's almost like they want to end the game now. Obviously they can't, but they're certainly posturing to push and then get the dream. Yeah, and I feel like being Cape Fear X, I don't think you can draft a better composition for them. They just seem to be all on the same page. They know what the win con is. They know what they have to do. Kill death. And they make it look so easy, but they're just layering everything really well. Whenever they're disengaged, they have another source of engage to follow through. And Barrel is just the icing on the cake. Yeah. Just a little bonus kill onto the support. And uh, 
Henna has been very fed. Clear got very fed. And closed in Raptors ahead of everybody else on the side of KT. And, you know, BDD did some damage, a couple of fights, but he's the only one. Deft has third lowest damage, only ahead of the two supports. Yeah, and also, BNK Fear X with double block lever into all these tanky targets. Actually, you can get a fair bit of value from the armor shred. Obviously, most people aren't building Black Cleaver, specifically the armor shred, they're building for the stats, but will help oh. Henna's damage. I mean, if they kill Henna, there is an angle, but that engage was with nobody except Kyoshik. Barrel is just gonna die. <laughs> nice try, I guess. But now, the rest of the comp comes in, and they have engaged for days, for millennia. They just chased them down. And you see BDD, big shuffle. He's got his turret, but he just gets flashed on. And the wallets are just so heavy that it doesn't matter what BDD does, he is just going to get pummeled and taken down. And at least for KT's sake, I guess the game might not end, or might not last very long. Yeah, uh, this one looks like it's just done. Kyoshik gonna have his recall interrupted. They're just gonna end here. Being in a game. Rex deserved win. You know, composition that works for them. They played it perfectly, and KT just rumbled. KT fell apart so quickly. <laughs> And man, BNK Fear X, absolutely fire in this second game. They draft a bunch of engage, they deal with the dives, they have a couple of huge team fights where they absolutely destroy KT, and they make it look so easy. A 20 minute win for BNK Fear X. And I feel like BNK Fear X, if they could play like this every game, they would be probably top four. Genuinely, yeah, but they don't and I really hope they follow through in game three drafts like this work so well for them They played it well Keep it up and you will beat KT and there will be such a big boost for a team that's already beaten T1 I really hope they do because I love watching this team the way they all love just to find these fights They play aggressive But uh consistency has been their downfall, but a good win here over KT BDD doing his best to try and keep things alive but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, outside of a couple of dives, one of them going horrifically wrong, actually. Um, well, at least Neil did nothing. Death did more damage than Jiro, so um, slightly more. So apparently this was also the fastest game of the season. Not too surprising, 20 minutes and two seconds. Yep. BNK Fear X did not waste a lot of time in this one. They pressed their buttons, they engaged, and they crushed them and they force a game number three. We're gonna have a break after the second game and we'll have the space to break down this one. We'll see you after the break. Okay. 
아 끝내만 해 이걸로 가볼래? 이거 빨리 밖에 없어 야 끊어줘 놀아 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 어 놀게 놀게 영아씨 바텀텔 지렸지? 받아졌다 일단 끝내보자 어 다음 판 잘해보자 세준형 노는 중 아직 안 끝나긴 했어 다음 판아 끝났어 다 있어 좋은데? Off KT, and I think for KT, Pyoshik has really been like the shining light when they've had struggles in spring. He was often that carry, not necessarily playing like carry champions, but like he had like his Ram mess where he was finding wins for them. And it feels like Raptor is doing a good job of matching him so far. Is KT again on the blue side? Corky, Ash, the other side, it is Rumble. Callista was the next ban for BNK Fear X. And then it was Vi Tristana as the final two bans. BNK Fear X, are you going to give Ezreal to Deft again? I would strongly suggest, no, don't do that. Because especially when you, when you look at the comp the compositions that BNK Fear X like to play, like that last one, it's a lot harder to do that to an Ezreal. Significantly more difficult. They don't ban it. It's first pick Ezreal. Now, Vi is left available this time. Um, I'm not saying that this is OK. But it does mean that BNK Fear X could actually try to run back the draft that they had, right? Because you've got everything except Renekton. You could you could get Ari, you could get Vi, you could get Zeri. I think ever a, a big thing though was how easy it was for them to target the Neela. It's going to be harder to target the Ezreal in this game, and also it worked well because KT had this two threat composition. There's no guarantee they'll end up in, a, in the same spot here. And honestly, I think for KT, it would make sense not to do that. Or you can just draft the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just draft the exact same comp with Israel. And on the side of B and K Fear X, they just won a game that was the fastest game of LCK Summer 2024. And it had these three champions. So they're going to do it again. Yeah. Honestly, I can fault BNK Fear X less. For I mean, to be fair, I, I can't even fault KT for drafting these three picks. Really, that 4 5 is what I'm looking at. Will they give Perfect more for carry so it's not just all the weight on, on Ezreal and Azir? But to be fair, I, I just think Ezreal is a lot more of a champion than Neela has ever been. You know, he is very strong, yeah. and Neela has, is so niche. You know, they were saying on the desk, Jiwoo has made it work occasionally. Guma. Occasion occasionally. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. Whereas Ezreal is very strong right now. And I think that does make a big difference. I wonder what they're going to ban here. Maybe, OK, Poppy. I was thinking Alistair. It feels like kind of the next step after Ezreal, Leona. The but it is Poppy. The Rex one Cassante then? Maybe they go Cassante on four? KT could ban Lulu here, I think would make sense if you're concerned about like a Lulu kind of pick coming in. Maybe you ban Lulu and then you pick Braum because uh, Khan and Lulu both good into Braum. You'd probably want some more engaged from maybe your top laner if you haven't. But Braum said Juani's still so strong. They ban the Rel instead. I think BNK Fear X, if they go Cassante here with the Poppy ban, I think it's fine. And they could get a good counter pick for Juro. Uh, it's not, uh, for Juro, yeah. And prepare for what KT you're going to take. But instead, they just go for the Alistair. They want to save their top lane counter pick. I imagine, I'm going to be completely honest, I imagine it's probably just going to be Cassante again for Perfect. Uh, and this is why I think this is a humongous fumble. Because now you're playing into Ezreal Karma, yep. and you're just going to lose lane. Like, categorically, you did no choose, it. You did choose to lose lane. That That is true. Um, and you know, they might pick their top laner first. Yeah, Perfect can pick Nara Cassante, and he is unfazed. I think KT should do it. I think, honestly, they should pick the Karma. Uh, the is there any world where they pivot to Braum? I, mean, I think Braum is fine here as well, honestly. It feels good into the comp. A little bit less pressure on the lane. Yeah, more of a survival lane for BNK Fear X, but the Braum Sejuani duo with three pretty auto-attack focused champions on the team is pretty solid. I don't think Braum's as suffocating um, don't, don't or Alistair this. as other champs, but definitely good into him. Even if it's not like a fantastic matchup, you can still definitely cause some issues and he can just get locked down. And Juro go on the cannon, which I actually really like because Braum doesn't do a fantastic job against cannon. Yep. Uh, and also really amps up that flank threat. 
You know, obviously in the later stages of the game, the Nod does outscale on the side lane, but early on, you just keep launching shurikens at him. And it fits with the theme of what BNK have wanted to do every time we've seen them play, and that is dive and play aggressive. And this comp isn't too different from the last one in the sense that they've swapped support for a different engage support, and they've swapped top laner, and everything else is the same. Yeah. KT Valster, though, uh, we'll see what value they can get out of the, the, the stacking passives, and I think that'll favor them a lot in skirmishes, because I think last t last game, they were trying to play around the Nila stacking, the Sejuani passive, They're like, this will be strong in skirmishes. It fell apart really quickly. This time, though, the Ezreal, <laughs> Braum, Sejuani <laughs> trio seems so scary. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, he did do the dance. A Go lot shake. of effort went into making that, and I can only commend it. Yeah, it's got like the joint on the knee and everything. That's that's really cool. That just set a whole new bar for We've standards. Had, yeah, we the, there's always ever evolving fan signs here. But then I also saw someone who drew a, uh, who drew a Kirby, so you know they got my they got my vote. I guess Kirby wins yeah. at least in Ox's mind. So. We have evolved here on the side of BNK Fear X. No more Akan, but you've got some pretty significant dive once again. We'll see if they can utilize that to potentially take down KT Rolster here in game three. Here we go, game three. And you know, honestly, I feel like we probably had the most even draft yet. I'd say, in my opinion, in sort of team win cons. Uh, not going to see a level one invade or anything, which I feel like when you're playing Braum, you should always go for a level one invade, even if you're just getting a war down or something. Like Braum, Ezreal, Sejuani. Yeah. I'm just saying the champs on the team, but it's because they're so good level one together. You land that Winter's Bite. Minimum flash, if not dead. Absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, even getting in there, trying to steal a buff, trying to get a little bit frisky is fine. And generally you can. We've seen teams do it almost every time. But Beryl says, no, my, uh, my one true love is deft. I'm going to put down a ward, I'm going to back, and I'm going to be ready to go with him. And they're going to invade. It's late, and they don't have the jungler, but they get a ward down. And they both hit their Qs onto Duro and chunk him out a little bit. That's what they're looking for. And it is once again, to no one's surprise, Grasp is here. But now, look at that win rate. No longer 5-0. Yeah. He did do most damage in the game in a 20-minute loss, and which also, I think is really impressive, honestly. And he also did play very well yeah. with the big shuffles. I mean, they lost so fast, yeah. and he still had like 800 DPM. <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, they were all jumping on top of him, and so he got these massive divides that they did a lot of damage, but they didn't win team fights. So. Yeah, it felt like maybe if KT had a second carry, perhaps an attack damage carry <laughs> on their team. Real. Uh, the oh, most... Ez Ezreal's one of them, yeah. Okay, so most broken champ on the patch is Rumble, obviously. Is is Ezreal number two? Um, or is it one of the mid laners, oh. Corky Tristana? It's not Corky. It's not Corky, but Tristana. Uh, Tristana's good, but we've also she hasn't won every game. I've seen. It's this is actually hard, but I think, in my opinion, it might just be Ezreal, and I think just because of how much he warps the game when he gets his mid-game items and he sets up and he starts like poking people out and so oh clear good wow. flash yeah clear is in a bit of trouble though as Pilsik has his flash just flashes on in it's as easy as that clear is in so much trouble and the sun comes in and the kill will go to perfect nice setup from him to get clear low and to force the flash, and then Pioshi comes in for the alley-oop. Yeah, good gang timing. We're even an awful spot for clear. Uh, very vulnerable there, and Perfect sets it up. And burning the flash before Pioshi could even touch him uh, definitely made it easy there. The confidence from Pioshi as well goes for the cute flash, and actually, 
sort of landed it, so he knocked him backwards. Um, we'll see that here. So obviously perfect. Goes in and gets this great flash stun, which obviously doesn't hit, but forces Claire's flash. And then Pioshik, he hits the Q, so he like bumps him back as well. And Claire instantly knows it's over. It, there's no getting out. He misses the Q on Perfect as well, which just means there's no chance he's getting a trade kill. Uh, and yeah, and now Perfect can buy a little bit of MR before getting back to lane. And you know what I respect? Clear's like, I'm doubling down. Dark Seal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... That's the best time to buy it. Might as well. You know? Yeah, buy it now, you get your refillable as well. Buy it when you're already fed and, well, you haven't got any stacks. You've already got the kills. Yeah. Buy it when you're 0 1 0 because it's all uphill from here. Like in game one, he went 0 3 0. Yeah. Up to 6 3. You have to have your Nuggery arc, you know? Yeah. 0 2 cannon. And then uh, you just take over the game. Yeah, and honestly, he did that all the time. Even with that gank, he's doing pretty good. You know, he's up quite a bit in terms of farm. Uh, Perfect can claw some back with his wave, but not enough. Yeah. Meanwhile, this bottom lane looks entirely different. Um, you know, it's uh, Zeri and Alistair, and the Alistair isn't going to do too much, but Deft and his pressure alongside of the Braum, they just get to, you know, if you're Alistair, you don't really do much into this. Yeah. Uh, especially with the Zeri, so you're just kind of standing around, which means that Deft just gets to poke them down and get leads. And they yeah. don't have to dive. I will say, though, playing Alistair, very different to playing like Leona into Braum. When you're going in on Leona, you're kind of in, right? But especially Joe with this phase rush Alistair, you can combo proc the phase rush and then just sprint right away, you know? Which yeah. is very goofy because Alistair's run is just so goofy, but... He's got a very big upper body. Yeah. And also should be on four legs, you'd think. When he's running around like this, <laughs> it looks... So yeah. Right. I mean, Volibear does it, right? Where he, like, charges at you on four legs. He pulls it off. Right? How come Alistair doesn't do that? Uh, I don't know. Oh, level six hit here, and that's actually a lot of damage into Perfect, but it was a bait! Barrel comes in! He's exhaust Braum! They land the stun and clear! Can't do anything! Oh, he gets the kill! Never mind! As the Q comes in at the very last moment, Perfect thought it was done, and so did I. But Clear had different ideas. Super well played from Clear, though. I was about to say it's a disaster. Oh, more of a fight coming in. Yeah, we're going to be fighting over the grubs as the slow comes down. Winner's bite here on a Raptor, but now they're just going to try to peel the layers. But BDD goes in, only hits Closer, who does not have the Spirit Rush. And I think that means that they're not going to be doing too much here as Duro. Oh, I flash. my goodness. I was like, Duro's just going to save his flash. He knows he's dead. And then last second, he's like, oh, but I can flash? Where? Into the wall? I actually think that play... I mean, it wasn't great. It was still KT getting an advantage, but BNK Firex felt like they were getting away, licking their wounds, escaping the situation, and he just burns flash for nothing. And now, oh, here you go, Joe. yeah, he gets so much damage down with the old barrel jumps in and tries to like stagger the uh, the wall and the exhaust to minimize damage, but just they don't kill him quick enough. Yeah. And here, the problem is they've already burned Close's ult to get to top lane. So they're really behind in this fight already. Uh, and I think maybe if Juro flashed Yoshik's Q, he just gets out. But here, you're just so dead. Even if he flashed into the pit. <laughs> Where were you going? He died. Yeah. yeah. I mean, BDD circles around the wall and he autos him once and kills him. It's fine. He's just unlocking Hex Flash, right? Alistair's yeah. Flash. Flash on Alistair against an Ezreal Azir. Just walk at them. He's like, I don't need this. I'm just going to throw it away. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just need a hands-off keyboard moment. You just need to go, look, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. I'll let it happen. Yeah. I mean, don't literally take your hands off the keyboard, you know, but just don't flash. You can do it, but don't let your coach see. Might get you in trouble. You gotta keep trying to the last second. Be in all your summoners. Yeah. Well, it's Chemtech Drake here to start. So that's good. We already had our Chemtech Soul moment. I didn't mention it earlier, but you know, we have some downtime now to just throw in some Ox Sussages for the first game. But anyway, it's not going to be that here in game three. Yeah, and KT with a pretty solid gold lead across the board, but no one with a really significant advantage. A pop Barrel. Barrel has a 500 gold lead. He's vibing. 
Uh, and also BDD, a decent amount ahead in this matchup. And it feels like in all the trades we've watched, when we've looked in, Closer has not been having a good time. Uh, and we didn't see too much of the mid lane matchup in the last game. But it didn't feel like it was... Actually, no, he was pretty... He was pretty. I think it was a similar amount of CS behind then as well. Yeah. I mean, oh. in general, the RE doesn't feel very good into his ear because you have burst damage, but you kind of need to use your Q on the wave if you don't want to just be pushed under turret consistently. But then you don't have good ways to trade with the Azir who's I'm gonna be honest, autoing I think, with you. I think the correct statement is it doesn't feel good playing into Azir. Period. He, that is true for pretty much everybody. Yeah, not a fun I mean, time. Yone has some fun. I don't think he does. I think Yone just weathers the storm and just gets... Yeah. That's not fun. But he also trades. I mean, at least he's got his own annoying trade patterns. Sure. So it's not like only you are you suffering. To, you have to match the annoyance. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I guess you can do that. Well, I mean, I guess Tristana can just order the wave constantly. But we are getting into the realm of broken mid laners. Uh, Barrel once again going for the. I feel like Clear has been really good in the one v ones this game. <laughs> they just haven't existed. <laughs> you know, he's 20 CS up. He got that trade kill, but he just keeps getting ganked. Barrel just came here for level six. Yeah, he's just here to leech XP from Perfect. Yeah, and he did, and he hit level six, and now he's backing. Thanks for the assist, Perfect. Yeah. You see that Raptor, he tried to go top, but he was seen the whole way, and Jonas Strong did a good job of just showing all the vision in the top jungle that sees exactly where Raptor is, and they can just map out where the Vi is. So this time around, it's not just free Vi kills as KT are diving bot. It is Vi being spotted the whole way through, and they can just kind of sit back, get tankier, and not get so far behind like they did in game two. Yeah, I do find it uh, kind of funny the last game. We kind of saw Perfect constantly getting ganked by the enemy team, like the last, like the first game. Sorry, constantly getting ganked by BNK Firex. Yeah. Now Barrel is ganking him and just <laughs> taking his XP away. He's uh, he's just doing Barrel things. Yeah. And you know, if Raptor was top, Barrel would have helped a lot. And Raptor was top that one time, but he got spotted, so Barrel's presence didn't do a whole lot because there was no gank that actually came through. You know, you said Barrel's presence. And it sounded a bit like presence. And if he'd been playing Santa Brom, that would have been so funny. That would have been hilarious. That would have yeah. been one of the funniest yeah. that would have been really, of all really time. Funny. But unfortunately, he's not playing Santa Brom, so meaningless. Honestly, just meaningless. Yeah. Very disappointed after that. <laughs> but it, it's it's okay. We'll live. We'll move on. Uh, and KT, four grubs now, and that face dragon. Pretty big advantage in terms of those objectives. But not too much action outside of those early skirmishes coming in. Definitely feels like we've had a slower pace of games outside of that second one. The second one, lightning fast. First and third, easy going. Yeah. Uh, but now Clear going to get some alone time with the turret. And this is really the payoff for his strong laning he's had so far this game. He has really challenged Perfect in this matchup. Yeah, the Kennen into NAR matchup has always been a fun one. That is why Clear did go for this. I really love the choice to go for Kennen instead of something like a Camille or a Fiora. Um, it just feels like it's really difficult for teams, especially teams that aren't extremely dominant, to, to get tons of value out of, out of picks like that, right? Not everybody can be Bin. Not everybody can be keen on Fiora, right? And not every team can play around those certain players that play those champions that well. So I, I think just picking Kennen, you get in, you press your ult, you win lane as well. Uh, you don't win it quite as hard in the side lane as the game comes along, but you're, you're still enjoying a lead in a certain sense. And then you're still able to fight with the team. I think as well, if you're playing Camilla for Nor Fiora into the Nar, you really have to challenge constantly to get the advantage get in the, the matchup. Get the plate! Get the plate! Get the plate! You're also Take it playing, away, Ox. You're playing Zeri, so you could just walk up, cue the tower once, and then slide away. No counterplay. Yeah. Um, I don't feel good about that. I don't think anyone feels good about that. That doesn't bring me joy. I think even Henna, in his decision to not get the plate, doesn't feel good about that. Yeah. I think he also doesn't. If he knows, maybe this is this is one of the things the coach needs to go over with him after the game. He'll just get it. He'll get that clip, and he'll just show it. And Henna will just be head in hands, distraught, 
What have I done? Yeah. I brought shame to our team. 125, 125 gold. gold. Yeah. Wow, we said that at the same time. That was weird. We're in sync. You we know, know, this is the second day of us casting together in a row. Yep, yeah, and looks like we're about to get some action. Clears, like, I'm going to recall so I can TP in. Yeah. And uh, the dragon's already gone. So if this fight actually breaks out, we might get it. And yeah, they're just going to dive into the back line. It's death. Well, they oh. in so much trouble. The flank from Clear is immaculate. And now Perfect is going to hit Meganar, but it just doesn't matter. He doesn't have Flash. And everybody on the side of KT is routed. Look at BDD. He wasn't able to help out the team at all. He got one kill and left. And now Pioshik is just dead. It's another huge team fight here for BNK Fear X around the Dragon. And you know, we talked a little bit about the Ari earlier pairing with the Vi. Vi obviously very hard in the meta, but Ari not seen as much. This feels like BNK Fear X's meta. This feels like what they should be playing. We've always thought of them as this aggressive team who exactly. love the challenge, you love to drive forwards. This gives them the tools to play with. And you know, I was concerned about the Ezreal. I'm like, okay, he's a very safe AD carry. Can you pull this off against an Ezreal who can play at such a long distance? Well, the Arcane ships in, and he immediately gets punished. And the charm hits the Sejuani, but the flank from clear is really the icing on the cake. Oh, it was so good. The exhaust came through as well, and it's just not enough. You know, the CC is still going to come in. And with the Ari, the damage is there too. Look at Ryu. It's like he just had a big epiphany. He's like, man. I should just draft this for these guys every game. You know, I'm so used to disappointed Ryu as the reaction yeah. back from his days as the player. <laughs> it's great to see happy Ryu. Oh, it is. I mean, he's ecstatic, obviously, after that. As I didn't want to see this graphic where we get the one plate and bot that was not taken. Wait, that how come, fortunate zero how come next BNK to the Rx have two plates, a KT of one, but the gold's the same? Explain it, Brendan. Explain it, Henna. Well, you didn't have to explain it. His team is getting it done in the team fights, and, and the coordination as well, the synergy, man, it was just, it was just really fantastic for BNK Firex. You know, it's good to play meta champs, but I think we do it too much in Korea. And I, I think as time comes along, teams like BNK Firex, they're figuring it out. Just dive them. Just play your game. And this is Braum, so maybe, maybe not him. Yeah, but I, I anyone like else? Teams have this view that the, the meta is like a locked-in thing. And because this is what Gen G does, that's what everyone has to play, and it's the meta. And I feel like you got to realize what's best for you. Yeah. And BNK Firex have done that. And now they're being rewarded with a 2.5k goal leader, picking up his Herald as well. Yeah, you remember yesterday too, DK was like, we're not going to play Gen G's meta. And yeah. they were the first team to take a game off of Gen G because yep. they played their game, not Gen G's game. Yep. If you're against, I mean, particularly Gen G is just such a good example because they've been so dominant. But if you're against yeah. a team like Gen G, if you play the same game, you're just going to lose. You know, they're so good at that. But play what works for you. Lean on your players. You know, players aren't all the same, they have different identities. Is Closure as good as Azir as BDD? No. Yeah, that's but. why Henna hasn't played a single game of Ezreal when Ezreal is the best AD carry in the in the in the current meta. Just stick him on Zeri. Yeah. He doesn't have to play Ezreal. Yeah, but still, despite the good advantages being KPRX have gotten, still opportunities for KD to bring him back. I think really for me, I'm looking at Deft. We were praising him so heavily coming into this. His Ezreal has been fantastic. Not today. You know, in game one, he kept getting caught by the uh, the grasping roots from Raptor. And then after the fact, he was getting caught by Close's Yone ult. He arcane shifted at that team fight. Death needs to play with more respect because he is the focus target and it is working for being yeah. KPRX. I feel like it's very obvious now. So hopefully he's like, okay, I really got to <laughs> hunker down. I got to make sure I'm ready to go when they try to dive me. Yeah. Because next team fight, they're going to have their flashes back. Hannah's level 11. Yeah, everybody's going to be diving into the back line again. Okay, well. Drift not quite as good. I'm just going to say that Raptor's driving instructor is significantly more accomplished than Closes. Because yeah. uh, that. <laughs> uh, to be fair, in his defense, there wasn't really anywhere he could go with it. You know, you're not just going to drive into the tier two and put yourself in a vulnerable spot. There's no mid tier one anymore. Yeah. So. Maybe he just tried to park it safely. <laughs> it wasn't really like a parallel park, though. Just kind of bumped it into a wall and said, this this is good. There's no way to get out of the Herald without knocking into something, right? Uh, Maybe they should add a After it travels for a certain amount of time. Well, yeah. 
So maybe he just should have just done circles of the yeah. tree. <laughs> so, you know when you're looking for a parking spot, just keep going around. Oh, there it is. I know that feel. Park it up here. <laughs> yeah. As you mentioned, I mean, KT aren't out of this one, but we see exactly what this comp does. And it does it almost better, especially if Clear can find angles to flank. It's just kind of insane what Kennen can do. Kennen is, I would argue, a better flanking champion than Renekton. Renekton's fantastic, Attic, don't get me wrong, but if you land a slicing Maelstrom on top of an Ezreal or any kind of squishy champ that doesn't have mobility, he's probably going to die. Yeah, I think it's just... It's just different because obviously, Renek uh, sorry, uh, Kennen has a lot more burst based around his ult. Renekton has a lot more sticking power in the fight. Yeah. Uh, and there's also exhaust to deal with the Kennen. So the immediate impact is that Kennen turn up a backline, 100% agree. Uh, definitely stronger than the Renekton. But uh, one thing is that they are quite AP heavy with the Kennen and the Ari. BDD is going towards that Bissell Mask. There's a lot of tanks on the side of KT. Um, and the exhaust is a big factor. And it's also. A lot easier to fumble. I mean, you can have to fumble on an actor, but like, if you miss your ult unclear, what have you got? Um, whereas Renekton, it's kind of hard to miss E flash W. Yeah, it is pretty difficult. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, you get your cooldowns back, and those individual abilities can feel more impactful than Kennen just throwing one shuriken at somebody. But uh, ever since that last fight, KT said, we're not fighting. Uh, you know, they gave the Drake over. They didn't have any control over the Drake pit, so yeah. Raptor just took it individually. The whole process yeah. is, if we never leave our base, you can't buy ultas. Yeah, I remember uh, the one thing that uh, stuck out to me from the desk. Well, Closer just going to ult away. Good idea from him, and Bissell Mask is completed. So Closer probably feeling the brunt of that, as he doesn't have any magic penetration at this point in time. Um, but yeah, Wolf was like, KT were just stuck there in the fetal position, trying not to die. And uh, I really hope that this game doesn't turn into that again. They're not that far behind. It's not the same game as game two. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of waiting for spikes. You know, we talk a lot about the Ezreal, Triton, Spike, the Man Immune, the, the Triforce. Death's tier is stacked. I'm presuming he's not recalling with enough money to buy it. This, as well, with the Abyssal Mask coming in for Azir, might be the point where they go, okay, we, we can make something, uh, things happen. If not, then maybe they wait for the Warmogs on, on Pyoshik, but really, you're not really waiting for power spikes on your Sejuani, so I think they just start to try and make things happen now yeah. and see if they can find an angle. Well, they're going to engage on a Braum here, and Barrel is a little bit in a risky spot. He's just going to die immediately. I take back what I said earlier. I guess you can just engage on the Braum. Raptor did take a lot of damage, but it's a kill. And they didn't utilize the teleport out of clear, the slicing maelstrom. Cannon wasn't even needed. Yeah, I will say TP burn from Fairfax. That's nice that the BNK Fairfax got that. But Barrel didn't burn any summoners. That exhaust is still there. And I can commend that decision because his exhaust, it be. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, okay he's so totally fine. fine. Yeah, <laughs> if that was anyone else besides Yuani. Wow, he's perhaps not. totally not dead. But I think Barrel's exhaust usage has to be very. Tempered. You really need to save it for the cannon. So yeah. this kill doesn't really amount to much for being Fear X. And we also actually saw a flash burn by Closer to little value. So they kill the Braum, flash ends up getting burnt. And I think Closer was obviously fishing for Piosik. Was like, if we kill him, we get Baron. Didn't find it, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, in, in the end, not the most impactful kill. But it kind of shows we've seen a lot of teams targeting the Braum because you feel like he's super tanky. But he's not Alistair, you know? Yeah. Uh, he's not even Leona. And as much as the shield can prevent a lot of damage, can block it. Well, he's about to hit Meganar here, and he's under the turret. Doesn't seem like Fear X care at all, as a lot of damage will go into this Meganar. Another Q comes in, but now the TP, this time from BDD. Trying to extend this fight. Here comes Pioshing. He's going to throw it into Duro as they're trying to disengage, but a big sweep on the closer as he takes a bunch of damage. But now the Kenny gets to that back line. Closer will get down, but the exhaust comes down on that clear, and the fight is very broken up. Clear, very low, but he will not go down. And this Ari is still alive. Henna will attack that front line, and BNK Virex will win the fight. And Henna turns up just in time. Death going aggressive. Is that enough? Did he get them low enough that they won't Baron? I think so. Maybe they weren't going to do it anyway. But a scrappy fight. Closer suffering from that lack of flash there. Didn't have a way to escape BDD's ultimate. The big takeaway is a ton of summoners burned. But BNK Fairx coming out with the edge as well in this one. 
And unfortunately for Raptor, the Q doesn't connect. I don't think that would have meant they would have killed him before he got Meganar, but he would have maybe been in a more uncomfortable position. The close has been all ult charges here. No flash from a four. So he gets shuffled in and he has nothing. But then here, Clear managing to get on top of death again. The exhaust uh, does come through. Does obviously mitigate the damage, but death is so low. And then Henna flying in, flashing over the Winter's Bite to connect on those two kills. Really well played. If Henna was there sooner, that's an ace into Baron for BNK Fear X. Yeah, and you know, it's not an ace into Baron, but it, it's still a big win. They extend their lead, they're 5,000 gold ahead. Zeri, 2 0 and 2. The only person who went down in that fight on the side of BNK Fear X was closer. And now, how can you fight Dragon? when there's no exhaust for the cannon, and they're just even more fed. In this position, it's so scary. It's a four, 5k gold deficit. You don't have flashes neither if your backline carries for KT, only on your support uh -oh. jungle. Kalei's got a great flank, but it's Hextech soul point. Like, I feel like you really want to contest it, and it's so scary right now. I think it's probably just going to be gone by the time they find clear. Okay, well, yeah, Barrel will find him. And Pioshik, meanwhile, is trying to get in the pit. So now Slicey Maelstrom clears Fury, killing him, but he will go down. He was alone, and it is a shutdown that's given a death, but BNK Fear X got Hextech soul points. Yeah, and uh, BNK Fear X got what they wanted. KT knew they had to shut down the cannon, but that is just a great example of what happens if you don't have exhaust. That was only clears damage, and he nearly just one shot's death. <laughs> Yeah. Deft has to be very careful about Deft is buying magic how he's gonna, right now. He's yeah. like, I need this. What's he going to go? I mean, Maul? You can go Maul. Or... The thing is, I think QSS obviously stops the stun. But if you're out of mobility, you might still be in the ultimate. Oh, that's not so, this. There's no TP on clear. Yeah. But it's a little bit slow. They, they do have Ezreal in his ear, so I, I think... They're confident to take it down, but can they take the fight? Close are going to have to ult away. Pioshik dashing out of the pit as the call was to fight, but Closer is Ari. So he just spirit rushes away, and the Baron take is done. Yep, and also with this being a composition with the Braum, like the Sejuani, the chances of Sejuani hitting an ult on Closer is, is almost zero. You don't have a Vi, you don't have a Nautilus, you can't just press R and go. So Closer able to pull them away, and KT lose their tier two as a result. And this is that replay, they find him, and they commit onto him, and then Clay just goes, Look at this. I can just do a million damage. He almost killed him. I mean, the Extendo Beam almost got him too. Yeah, he needed to go down. And this isn't like one-shot cannon build. This is Leandri's Crypt Bloom. Yeah. He's pretty strong, I think it's safe to say. Uh, and Deft, definitely don't want to be arcing and shifting into the cannon anymore. Uh, does have the Hex Drinker now, and Beryl has Exhaust again. But we're now looking at a scenario where three dragons of BNK Fear X, their comp already feels so hard to disengage from with the amount of engage they have. If they get Hextech Soul, no chance. Like, you're, you're not going to be able to war. Oh, they're going in. Raptor, okay, you got the Grom. And the rest of the team is coming over. The ult is here on the Brom once again. Has nowhere to go for Beryl. He will go down. As we see, True Shot Barrage hit everybody. Didn't even do that much damage. Meanwhile, we got Claire versus BDD. More like Clear running away from BDD, who has hit level 16 and takes down the turret. Yeah, and Raptor, I feel like his target selection on Vi has been so good. And it sounds like such a simple thing, just press R, but knowing who and when specifically. The big thing is the when. To ult and just locked Barrel up there, said, hey, we can kill the Braum. Easy peasy. He's just a support. And I feel like he's been so good this whole series. I feel like out of the team, he's been the, the really consistent performer, even though everyone's obviously stepped up. Raptor's been having a fantastic game as well. And here you can see the thought process is, okay, we'll wait for Barrel to try and let him get over the wall. But he's locked in place for so long. And then the headbutt comes in from Juro to lock, knock Yoshik away so that he doesn't have someone to jump to. And he just ends up getting locked there. Barrel no flash, he wasn't able to get out. And again, Holds onto the exhaust, but that feels less and less relevant when BNK are now 6,000 gold ahead in this game. 6,000 gold, you've got a Zeri that hasn't died on three and a half items. You know, you just have so many threats. You have Arivai as a duo, and you have Kennen on the flanks, and then 
if something goes wrong, as we saw in the uh, saw in the last fight, it being Key Ferrix kind of got caught, eventually Zeri gets there, <laughs> and you're going to use a lot to try to kill one of those people. You know, we saw the divide that hit closer, but then you had nothing for Hannah. Oh, Juro? I think he's okay. Little phase, phase rush. rush. They'll, yeah. they'll run away, do a little... <laughs> Throwing his arms around. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing to mention is Raptor's hella fed right now. And the thing is, obviously, Vi is still valuable if she's behind. You can just press her on a target. But Raptor's so strong now that he can actually just blow up any target he gets onto. The damage he's going to be doing is insane. And he's so bulky, so hard to deal with. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, Death is relying on hitting the skill shots and is often the one being ulted. BDD, his damage output isn't that high. A lot of the value he gets is the fact he's so durable, he lasts a long time, but he's going to take a, a fair bit to cut through this Vi in team fights, uh, especially with the Sterex as well. 30 seconds until that Dragon, all Summoner spells are back up and available, which I feel like KT are happy about that they have those. They, they, they definitely need summoners, I feel like, more than BNK Fear X, but they're still in such uh -oh. a deficit right now. Oh, I thought maybe Clear was going to go insane mode, but it's just KT moving in as a five-man unit, trying to get mid-pressure. But, yeah, pretty even spot at the moment, and Clear's just kind of in the mid lane. I mean, if he's spotted and they know exactly where he's coming from, that surely diminishes his effect. There's two wards behind them he could TP to. Oh, good catch. The play from Yoshik, and now Raptor, he is quite tanky, and he does have flash, so he gets away. Here comes Duro, just gonna ult. Alrighty. <laughs> and he'll walk away. There is one ward behind now that Clear could get to, but it feels like it's come to a bit of a poke war, and. Definitely KG winning on that, but there is a red buff on BNK Fear X to heal up. Perfect loses Mega. Henna has Bud there, so he can just heal off the dragon. Yeah. And Clear is looking for the angle. The GP to the ward is there. They just want to go to the drink. Push. He's it, going, he's going, he's going. Yeah, they're just going to try to flip it, and it does go to Pioshin, but let's take a look at the fight. Clear is not here. He goes in behind it. Closer so low, but BDD, he can't get the job done. And look at the rest of the team just being shredded by the Zeri. Henna getting on top of everybody, and the fight is so broken that Fear X, B and K Fear X are just so far ahead of this one. Death trying to kite away as, nope, no TP for you. And Depth eventually will be taken down as well. Perfect trying everything in his power to take something to get away. And oh, he's going to be denied once again. It's an ace. And B and K Fear X will try to push to end. They should be able to get this with both carries up with two grubs as well. With a little bit of help from that, they should just be able to end here. You see the rest of the team coming in. And B and K Fear X, they were ahead in this game. And they find the winning angle in the team fight. Don't get the soul. They should have the damage to close this out. Feral's gonna try and block. They should get this. Yeah. I think it's just over. The turrets are falling like pieces of paper, and the Nexus will as well. And being K Fear X, they get another upset victory, you can call it. They are on a huge streak, and it feels like they've really found their identity here in the LCK. 100%. They've found their identity. I feel like Rafter has gelled so well, playing at such a high level with this team. And KT, their five win streak ended by them. This Viari, they made it work so well. The Zeri in tandem with it, and Clear as well. <laughs> Clear on this Kennen had a really good eye for these flanks. In the last fight, he took a while to get into it, but he posed such a threat to KT that he made the game so uncomfortable. And obviously, they were really far ahead at that point, but it just feels like this team has leveled up so much since what we saw from them early in the split or just early in the year in general. <laughs> nice. Good one from Raptor. He's getting better. He's getting more confident. And the team is as a whole. Closer gives us the heart to all of you being K-Firex fans out there, he says. Absolutely. And, you know, I feel like the T1 win, I think most being K-Firex fans, they would have taken that. They would have been happy. They're like, that's great. This win as well. Two upsets in such short succession. They're feasting right now. They absolutely are. And there's no, you know, overly insane ceremonies or anything like that or celebrations, but it, it's still really happy vibes for being KPRX. I'm just really happy that it feels like they figured it out. You know, they, they figured it out. And, you know, maybe some teams will come into this in the future games and say, we're banning by 100%. And that might change up the way that BNK Fear X have to play. But 
it just gives you that confidence that these guys can figure it out. They figured out uh, two matchups against two really strong teams. They've won in drafts, and yeah, it just feels like they've improved so much. Yep, yeah, and, and I feel like the addition of Raptor, you know, I feel like the star of the split, we didn't really share how much impact it would make. I feel like he's really come alive in, in these last couple of series. Uh, I think this Vi game as well had such a good eye for the engages, and I feel like this is the thing that BNK Fear X do so well and that makes them then is, is these dive comps, these engages that we've seen today. But just the fact they're all on the same page, like Closer, Clear, and uh, Raptor there, all in sync. And it's just really great to see uh, them lean into that so heavily. And I feel like yeah. there were some hiccups in this game. It wasn't all clean sailing, but the general trajectory was just in their favor constantly. And uh, the cannon value, massive. Yeah, the cannon value is huge, and it brings you back to the draft. We saw Corky, Ash, and Renekton banned by KT. They got their first pick, Ezreal, but that was nothing compared to the Ari and especially the Vi, who kind of made it all happen. I, I think that's going to be something that the coaches are going to be looking at for future drafts. And so uh, good. close it, yeah. the initial engage on a death, chunk them low, and then Clay comes in to slam BDD. And again, you know, this time they had the Gnar at least, but it feels like into these dive-heavy compositions, it makes you wonder what KT could have done differently. Like, I feel like if you're diving into a Zyra, things are drastically different. You could see that backfiring, but it just felt like BNK Fair X decided, we'll kill Deft, and they, they, they just did it there. Yeah. Especially if the team has a lot of momentum and one player is playing out of his mind in the last series they just played. Just isolate him and kill him. Yeah, Def did not have a good time this game. This series. Yeah. And he's just talking about how Braum is going to respawn and try to stop it and just uh, stay calm. Hit the tower. Only hit the tower. <laughs> Only hit the tower again. And then a bunch of nice. Yeah. <laughs> they get hyped. They know the moment when it's definitely in the bag. Was just a little bit delicate with the spawn timers, uh, so they had to stay focused. But yeah, I mean, fantastic game there. Henry as well, I feel like, obviously he's not really, I feel like, the main character in this game. Uh, obviously he got POG in the last one, but like the flash over the winner's bite and just providing that cleanup role in the Zeri yeah. really effectively. I mean, the Zeri is so valuable in a comp like this. Everybody's going in, everybody's focused on the champs that are diving in, trying to peel, and then Zeri just shows up and you're like, we we used everything. We can't deal with Zeri. And Hannah did exactly that very well. So BNK Fear X, big 2-1 victory tonight. Let's send it over to the space to break down this series. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisun for the POG interview translation. And we are here joined by Hena and Raptor on the side of BNK Fear X as they started off their winning streak for the first time this season. And Hena, congratulations on winning your first POG. How do you feel? Yeah, actually, I have never won a single POG so far, so I was feeling small at the moment, you know, and also I was feeling sorry for my teammates as well, but today I finally showed up, so I'm so happy and grateful. Raptor! BNK Ferox achieved the first winning streak of the summer season. How do you feel? So I'm having my debut season in the LCK, and I'm so glad that I managed to start off a winning streak. So after losing a game, what did you guys focus on in order to secure a match win? KT, their laning phase, uh, the bottom duo's laning phase is really strong, so we just wanted to make sure that, you know, we can stay strong against them as well. Raptor, we had the fastest game of the season, 20 minutes and 2 seconds. How did you pull it off? In the early game, um, actually KT set up a really good turret dive, but Closer, he was having a really good priority in the mid lane, so he could save his teleport to say Later on, he could cover the dive attempt with his teleport, which was really effect effective. Were you expecting a Nilla pick into Zeri? That was actually my plan. I was about to play Nilla into Zeri, but I was not expecting Def to, you know, come up with that counter pick. So I was a little bit surprised, yeah. 
So, how did the laning phase go? Could you break it down for me? Dilla is a very strong lane pick, so yeah, she was definitely uh, really uh, strong in the early game. So, in game two, let's take a look at this team fight around the dragon. The Zeri's positioning was so on point. How did you manage to play out this fight? I mean, already my teammates managed to kind of force all the major cooldowns out of the opponents, so I was uh, I was able to you know stay in the back line and do the damage. And Hena, this is actually your first match win up against Theft. You were on a 14-match losing streak and you managed to escape from it, finally. I mean, I was actually aware of it. I've always told my teammates I have never got a win against Theft, so it means a lot to me today, you know? It's a, what a wonderful day. And Raptor, I think the REVI duo was kind of the main factor of BNK Firax's victory today. What did you guys focus on in terms of the drafting going up against KT? We are very, very confident in, you know, dive comp. So we just wanted to focus on the playstyle that we are good at. And that was the dive comp. Now here's another replay. Let's take a look at it together as well. The team fight from Fear Axe. BNK Fear Axe was so on point. Especially Vi managed to dive on top of the Ezreal in the back line. Actually, I thought we were in a pretty much of a rough spot. And then I noticed Ezreal actually using his arcane shift forward on the bottom side of the team fight. So we managed to kind of, you know, catch that play and kind of punish it in order to seal the deal. Anything you want to say to the coaches who was very enthusiastic and supportive throughout the series? I mean, I'm really grateful for our coaching staff. I knew they were also having a really hard time together with us, you know, throughout the uh, losing streak. So I'm so glad that we managed to bring them a victory. Thank you so much for your wonderful strategy and drafting. I wish we can continue a winning streak from now on. And that was the victory, first victory of the second round robin of the summer season. So what is your resolution for the rest of the summer regular season? First time uh, getting a winning streak, so I'm so, so happy. But we will not let our guards down. We will make sure to pick up another win and make it to a three-match winning streak. Right now, we are on a really good momentum, but, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the next match. So we will keep on working hard in order to come back with even better performance. And that's the end of the interview from Raptor Hannah and back to the space. Thank you.